Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima, and today we're going to start a new subject and we're going to be talking about Java. And I'm going to do the real basic of Java. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to talk about variables and strings and loops and fors and whiles and conditionals and methods and classes and um, various things related to Java. Then we're going to move to unit testing in Java. And then we're going to talk about API test, uh, uh, creating an API in Java. Uh, we're going to be using TDD along the way uh, as well, uh, when we, whenever we're doing that API. And this is going to be really exciting. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive notifications of my next videos. And I'm going to post the links of preview or other playlists that might interest you. And let's start. I have here my terminal and I don't have any, any files here. So what I'm going to do, we're going to create a new project with Gradle. I already created, a, I already ha have a, a video that shows how to create a project, but I don't want to reference another video. I want, I want to put everything in this project since we, okay, we, are, we are creating a new. So I have Gradle version. So I'm going to do Gradle version here. Dash dash version. And 7.4.2. So I'm going to create a version called a uh, project. Uh, I'm going to issue a command called Gradle init. And it's going to start a new project and I'm going, I can choose between basic application library and Gradle plugin. Basic is going to be really basic. I don't want to do that. Application is going to have a little bit more stuff than I wanted, but that's fine. Library, uh, I, we are not creating a library and neither we are creating a Gradle plugin. So I'm going to do two for basic. Then I'm going to choose the language, language which is Java. Um, the, uh, we are only create, creating one application in this project, so the default is no. We are using Groovy as the language. I'm going to also leave here the default. Uh, JUnit 5, it's what we're going to be doing for testing. This is the default name. This is the default package, and we are done. Great. So. Now my project has a couple of things and out of those things, I can see this, right? So we have Gradle W uh, for Unix and we have Gradle W for Windows, the bat file. So whenever we are using Gradle here, we should be using in this project, we should be using the Gradle W instead of the actual Gradle. And the difference is the Gradle W is a Gradle wrapper, wrapper, right? So it's wrapping the Gradle. Uh, I can do the command, I can do Gradle tasks using not the wrapper, and I can do Gradle W tasks, and it's going to execute. It's fairly the same thing now. So what is the difference of using the Gradle and the Gradle wrapper? So when I execute Gradle, I'm executing the, the, I'm executing the library that is installed in my computer here, right? When I'm executing the Gradle W, I'm executing this script. And the difference is the Gradle that I have is on version 742 as I already showed you dash dash greater 42 that I already showed you right cool and that means that whenever I execute a, a command is going to be using this version however if I install a new version let's say if I update my Gradle to 7.5 or 8, I'm going to be on a new version and the new version is going to have new functionality and old functionality might stop working, might be different, might not be supported anymore. So when I execute just Gradle, I'm executing whatever I have installed in my computer. 
where when I execute Gradle W, I'm executing the Gradle with the same version that was uh, used during the project's creation. All right, so let me show you here. Uh, I have IntelliJ here, right? So we have a couple of things that I can show you. So the Gradle W, it's in the bat file, it's a huge script, right? The, we can take a look at the Gradle uh, folder and has a wrapper here for the W. And you can see that there is a binary for the jar file and you have a properties. The properties, you can see that there are some uh, uh, user variables uh, and you have the, uh, sorry, the environmental variables and you have the version of the Gradle 742. Right. So this means that whenever I execute Gradle W in any computer, if I don't have this Gradle version installed, the Gradle W is going to make sure it's going to be using that version and it's going to download that version for me or for anybody. All right. So that's why we use Gradle W. And we have a couple of commands that I can, can execute. So we, I can do tests and execute all my tests. I can uh, do run and it's going to uh, execute the program. Hello world. I have, this is a CLI. So I have all uh, commands that I can use here. And I, I can also create more commands to this. Great, what else? We have a settings which basically sets the name of the project and it's asking to include the app folder. Amazing. So what else we have here? We have the build.gradle. So the build.gradle starts with a plugin. So we have a plugin says saying uh, this is an application, right? So when we started in the creating the project, we chose application. We did not choose uh, basic, we chose application and this is using a plugin application. And this is nice because this is giving us this, this run command here for us to execute the application. Now I have where my dependencies are and we are using Maven Central. And this is where it's going to be, Maven Grader is going to be downloading all the dependencies in our project, all the libraries that we are using. And talking about dependencies, now we have dependencies here, right? And we have a test dependency, test implementation, which is JUnit. And then we have the implementation for the system, which is using Guava, Google Guava. You can see all of those on the left here on your external libraries. And you're going to see the Guava and you're going to see a bunch of for the JUnit. Next, you have the application where you are defining the main class java101.app. If you go to source, we're going to have main java, the package java101 and the class app. And next, you're going to define that whenever you're executing the task test, you're going to be using the JUnit platform and this is necessary to execute JUnit so the difference between test implementation and implementation is that this is the test implementation is going to be used only for the tests and the implementation is going to be used for the system. And that means that uh, whenever you deploy the system, it's going to use only the implementation dependencies for the system. And is not going to use the test implementation because whenever the system is deployed to production, you're not going to be executing running unit tests. You're going to be executing the system it itself. So the whatever dependencies you have just for tests, you don't need to deploy those to production. So that means that you're going to have a smaller artifact. You're going to have a smaller binary file to be installed and, and, and that is good because you don't you don't want extra things in production that you're not going to use. You want to be as small as possible. It's going to make it easier for downloading, it's going to make it easier for rollbacks, for deploying, for everything. 
So that's why there is this separation. So you you only going to use whatever it's um, whatever the, the the testing dependencies in your dev developer machine and not in production. Cool. What else we have here? Um, so let's take a look at app. So app is where the application is. When we execute it, it displayed hello world. Right, so this is a method, and I'm going to explain methods uh, in later videos. But this is a method; it's a public because it's going to be accessible by by other places, by other files. Can call this. It's a string because it's a text. It's returning a text. So I'm saying that this method is returning a text. This is the name of the method, and I'm returning a string. And I have a main file here as well that is also public it's static void main main because it's the main method void because it's not returning anything and static means that i can call this from anywhere without creating a new object i can just call this method and it's receiving a list of arguments a list of strings so this is piling up a list of strings and passing these as args. So if I'm calling this main from the terminal, I can pass multiple uh, parameters to, to the system and all of those parameters that I'm sending, all of the options that I'm sending is going to become the args. Now I'm printing this to the terminal. I'm creating the new object app and I'm calling the greeting method, and that's what this is doing. I can execute this by clicking here and execute run. It's going to execute here, hello world, or I can do com control shift R, and it's going to execute this as well, control shift R, and it's going to execute this as well. Uh, it's the same in Windows as well, control shift R. I also have my tests. Uh, that it, it also created it's the same structure and you have a test that uh, you have the first lines is creating the new app the class app the name of the object is class under test and this is a very simple test this uh, is making sure whenever you call this this is not no and if it's no it's going to uh, print this message Right, so assert not no. So it's checking this is not no, and no means uh, there is there isn't anything there. Right, so it's sort of like empty. It's it's uh, hollow. Let's say. So I can execute also this test by clicking here and executing here, and it's going to execute the tests. So this is basically it. I have covered. Uh, the whole initial structure of the project and uh, we are ready to start. So in next video, we are going to start going over details related to Java. So thank you for watching. If you like it, give the thumbs up. If you haven't, and it's really important that you do because that's how the channel can keep growing. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive notifications of my next videos and um, I'm going to see you on my next video.